I'm Tom Ray, and this is American Bandito. I've actually become a fan of just releasing stuff on the fly lately. I was thinking about that today. When I used to create something, I'd think about it forever. I'd draw a little bit of it, whether it was a drawing or hell, music or, or something like that. And I would sit with it forever. But, I don't know, something occurred to me while I was... I guess while I started doing the show, I made it so that I release something every day, even if it's not representative of what I do. Like the daily comic that I do every day, the first couple of times I did it, it took me a really long time because I would try to make it perfect. And now I only let myself do it for like 15 minutes. Otherwise, that's all I'm going to do. It's become kind of freeing. And also the fact that it's not permanent because like say I put it out and then realize that I missed something on it or I wrote something the wrong way. Since it's the internet, I just take it back, fix it and put it out there again. Or I even try out some things in different places and nobody knows about it. I've got stuff posted on a few other sites and if I don't tell anybody, nobody knows that it was me. But here's the other thing I learned too. I'm not making it for other people. I'm making it for me. Sometimes only I understand it or only me and my wife understand it, especially with the comic, because it's about us. I've been at museums or art galleries where I look at somebody's stuff and I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's about. I don't know why they did it. And they're not there to explain it to me. It's it's my own interpretation. Some people even say they think the artist was doing this. And it is that interpretation. Like, if people like it, they like it. If they don't, they don't. But I'm still going to make it. Just like with music or the comic or other things I'm doing, my whole point in the past year was just to get something, to do something, because I sat around and worried about how it was going to look to other people for so long. And that's the part that's really freeing. Now, I just need to figure out what I want to do with it. I met the person that I talked to today on Instagram. I'm Emily Mayer, and I guess I make comics. My Instagram is at E-Joy, J-O-Y, Mayer, M-E-H-R. Now, we met on Instagram, but as far as I knew, that was the only way that we knew each other. So when her and I spoke, we tried to figure out why were we following each other? How did we, how did this happen? And it turns out there's a weird sort of connection of events that happened that led up to it. Also, what was really cool is my wife and I just happened to decide to take a vacation weekend up to Minneapolis. And that's where Emily lives. So on our way there, I reached out to her and said, would you like to get together and talk? Because I kind of wanted to meet her. And I'm glad that I did. Because she's a really entertaining person. Yeah, I don't remember, but like, you know, that's the beauty of Instagram. You just create like weird relationships from just like commenting on people's comics, especially with daily comics. It's like, I kind of feel like I know the person, even though I've never met them. Put it this way, both you and I rarely post actual pictures of ourselves on there. But when I walked in, I knew who you were. You knew who I was. Yeah, exactly. And what made you start doing the the daily comics? So I'm going to say that when... I first started following you and or vice versa, you were already doing that. Or you were maybe even just starting out. Like, when exactly did you begin? I started at the end of May. So for four and a half years, I had a really crappy, repetitive job where I made hearing aids all day. Uh, computer-aided drafting, it was, it's just like an entry-level job. And, like, I listened to my headphones for eight hours a day and, like, basically made widgets. So, and then... They printed them out using a 3D printer in the back, which sounds cooler than it is. It was, it was like, you know, not a factory, but like kind of an office job. Did you go to school for CAD design or? Nope. This was a entry level CAD thing. So it takes like three months to get trained in. I would use a joystick to move around a 3D shape and then like put tubes in it on the computer. But then I would like make 80 of them a day. It really kind of dulls your mind after a while. But... Our biggest customer outsourced to China, and then we lost, like 70% of us got laid off, but I was like, yes, you know. I was 
like really excited to get laid off. After that, I did like a two month course from this like free program that's designed to get like women and minorities into tech. They had like a real strict attendance policy. So I was two minutes late one day and I had to leave. And then I think the next day after that, I started my uh, daily comics. So I started doing that every day because I was like, I had learned earlier on in my unemployment that it's like, if I don't have a routine, I'm gonna go nuts. The daily comic really kept me sane. I was always like saying, I'm gonna do a daily comic and this was like the perfect excuse. Had you done comics in the past or do you have any background in drawing? I have a two year degree in filmmaking. So for a while I thought I was going to like do film. I have done some of that, but I haven't done it in a while. So when I, when I got this job, this hearing aid job, it kind of wiped out a lot of like my creative life, which kind of sucked. So now I feel like I'm getting back to it, which is uh, really nice. I started making zines right after I got unemployed in uh, March. And I did my first zine fest actually in Madison, the print and resist zine fest. Wait, were you there? Yeah. We were at that. Yeah, I read that comic. I was like, oh, I wonder if they saw me. Maybe that's how we found each other. Who knows? I think that is because um, Stitch Boom Bang bought one of my comics and then tagged. I interviewed her that day. Really? We interviewed downstairs from there. So you were upstairs while we were doing our our interview. Oh, that is so crazy. (laughs) My first zine that I did in April for the Madison Print and Resist, that was actually based on my unemployment diary. And it's called Unemployment Diary. Before I started to do the daily comics, I, I did like kind of a half diary half drawing because whenever I try to like make a journal I end up drawing in it anyways so and it was like I would put like what was in my bank account that day and just like today I have such and such in my bank account and this happened and I had just like this terrible week my landlord told us we had to move out in two months I found out I had a STD that was fun and that was like the next day and then um, I found out my parents dog had liver cancer Oh, and then I got a car hit my car. But at the end of the week, I got to see monster trucks, so it has a happy ending. So how did you end up doing that particular show in Madison? So I have a friend named Maxwell uh, Singletary, and he does comics, and he lives in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. He used to live in Minneapolis, and we took a painting class together at MCTC, and Minneapolis Community and Technical College. He told me about that zine fest, and I'm like, this is perfect. I always say I want to go to zine fests and like this is like one that I can kind of actually get into. You know, like I applied late but they still let me in so thank God they did because it was a super fun experience and I had a great time. John Porcelino and he does King Cat Comics and I'm a huge fan of him. At Madison Print and Resist I did a zine trade with him and I was like oh my god a zine trade with John Porcelino! You know, but I think he lives in South Beloit but Yeah, I've been buying up his King Cat zines because they're like $5 each, so I'm like, I can buy one of these. And like, he writes about his life, so he was an inspiration, but um, also uh, James Kachalka, the comics artist, he, who kind of like pioneered the daily comic strip. I had like a big book of all his American Elf stuff, and I used to read that every day, and I was like, So when I would read that, I would be like, oh, that's a great idea. I really want to do that. That was part of the lesson plan from the book that I was reading, the cartooning philosophy and practice. The part that I kept up with was the four panel comic, try to boil your day down into four panels and see if you could fit it into there rather than like, oh, I can write about so much. It's no, you only have these four panels. So I thought that was just a neat challenge. So that's why it's like four panels then? It was, it was part of the whole lesson plan, but I kept with the four panel one. That's that's where it all started and that's just the way I kept doing it. So you variate your panels quite a bit. Sometimes you do four, sometimes three. But I have a sketchbook and that's where I draw all my comics in. It's kind of three panels wide. So I'm like, if I do three panels wide, then I can fit five comics on a page. And if I do four panels, then I can only fit two pages. Just, it's, you know, sometimes you have an eventful day and I'm sure you have also like days where it's like, there's nothing to write about today and other days where it's like a million things happened. And that's the challenge on both aspects. One thing that actually kind of helps me is I have an email I send to myself that I snooze until the year later. So it's kind of like a diary that tells me what happened a year ago today. So if you use Gmail and especially now, yeah, there's, there's a way to snooze it. So you write an email, email it to yourself and then snooze it for 12 months. 
and then that day it will reply to you and then you can respond to it and then you can read back what you did the year before. And the point was is because I write one of those each day or I did it way before the comic and doing that I think back, I start typing like, oh, this happened or this happened or whatever and I start writing stuff and that kind of makes me rethink the day and then when I go to the comic it's like, oh yeah, some little thing did happen that kind of stood out like say, most of them I try to do where it's me and her, something happened with us but it'll be something as strange as just like, oh, we walked by a construction site and they happened to be moving a porta potty in the entire entire place started to smell like a sewer. There you go. That's our strip. I've definitely noticed that since starting the strip, I start like thinking throughout the day. Like it provides a structure to my day sort of. When something interesting happens, well, I should definitely write about this today. But then also, so like when I write my things, I'm usually like lying on my couch. I've got the sketchbook in front of me and First I draw the panels, like I only recently started using a ruler before I would just freehand it. Yeah, using the ruler is better. I don't know, I'm a, I'm a very lazy person sometimes. So I've been volunteering at the Renaissance Fair. Oh my God, my feet hurt so bad after 10 hours, but um, it's really fun. I think I'm gonna do it again next year. Yeah. It was really interesting how it started. Um, there was like the neighborhood night out. So it was like, you know, go out and meet your neighbors. And I was like, eh, should I go? Yeah, I'll go. And then I went out and I was talking to one of my neighbors and I mentioned that I was unemployed. And he's like, do you want to work at the Renaissance Fair? And you're, vo you're a volunteer, so you don't make money, but you get to keep cash tips. Oh, okay. And because I'm unemployed, I kind of needed to make cash yeah, yeah. and not you know, other kinds of money. So yeah, I've been a beer wench um, for, I guess, a month and a half, and it's really fun and- Is it officially titled that? No. You're just, you're just acquiring what the old name for it was. I mean, there's really, I serve beer and I say like, my lord and my lady, you know, it's like, what yeah. can I get for you, good sir? Yeah. Whenever we get a tip, we have to say, huzzah for the tipper, and oh so every single time someone gives me a dollar, I say that. But it's the only, there's a dumb rule where we can't have a tip jar. So the only way you can let people know that you take tips is to yell every time you get a tip and then other people hear it. So if you go to the Renaissance Fair in Minnesota, in Shakopee, you're gonna hear that a lot. Mm -hmm. Mostly I work at this one booth called the Fainting Goat. So it's owned by a nonprofit. I think that's why we're volunteers. People just kind of do it for the love of the game, basically. And yeah, the wench life is pretty nice. When you make your comics, what do you do with them? I mean, you did the, the zine fest that you were at. Do you have any other promotional ways that you put it out there? Do you publish them, mail out, sell them on a website, anything like that? I've been thinking about selling them on a website. I don't quite... I know you sell them on, like... Amazon or yeah I've thought about like I've heard big cartel people sell it at yeah I don't really know how to promote my website very well or I just like search the hashtag comics or something like that and then you like comment on somebody's page and they comment back on yours and then you get to know people. And then they ask you to do a podcast. Yeah, basically. <laughs> I do the big cartel thing too, which is easier for the physical products. The Amazon thing is just because you can self-publish directly on there now, so it's on demand. So you can create a book, and then if people order it, they print it out for you and ship it, so you don't have to do anything. So that one's easier. I, I like easy, so maybe I'll do that. I recently finally bought a printer, and I, I just print them on computer paper. For my next round of printing, like, I would really like to get, like, cardstock covers. You know what I mean? Make them look a little more professional. Yeah, I don't know too much about promotion. That is something I'm thinking about, how to balance, like, because I'm going back to school, I'm going to have to get a job soon, and I really don't want to stop making these comics. But I've been able to do my daily comics and go to school. It's just like, you know, what's my day going to be like um, when my day consists of working. I'm like kind of afraid that maybe things won't be interesting anymore. I think I made a comic about that too. Stuff still happens. I mean, I don't think it won't be interesting. I think I see what you mean though, because you don't want it all just to be about work. I mean, I work every day, eight hours a day too, and I don't talk anything about my work. I think maybe it was just because I had such a boring job before where it was like, I would sit in a computer 
cubicle and like make widgets and just like stare at a computer. I'm a web developer. I do exactly that all day. I just don't make the widgets. I just make web pages. So there is a way around it. I'm telling you, it can be done. Well, that's interesting because like I'm going back to school for graphic design, uh, web and interactive media. Yeah, that might be similar to what I end up doing. Yeah. It was really interesting too. I got money to go back to school. There's like this program called the Dislocated Worker Program. They just kind of gave me money to go back to school. So that was nice. If you do actually get a job with graphic design for web development and all that kind of stuff. One of the things you get with that job is people tell you how they're going to promote things. I started out doing web development for an advertising agency. And basically it was just like, oh, so we're going to be making a bunch of online stuff. So you need to learn how to advertise online. Yeah. And, and so then they pay you to do it. You can use that to your advantage. How did your style come about when you're like a kid or whatever you want to draw realistically because like that's like the good way to draw and then I got more into comics and I was like I really like Egon Schiele and Schiele I don't know how to pronounce it but I like his stuff and he has really angular things I think I was in 10th grade and I read Linda Berry's book uh, 100 Demons and I really like her style yeah in high school is when I started I was reading like 20 web comics a day like at one point because there would be a huge link lists of links at the bottom of each comic so I'd check out like every one because you know I was a teenager and I didn't have too much else to do. I really love cross hatching just like if we're talking shop I love to cross hatch and I love to draw repetitive lines and dots. There's a comic called Amy and Jordan by Mark Bayer or Bayer. Amy and Jordan is really it's black and white so they always use like you know, you use the dots to diff instead of colors. It, you would use like, this area is dots, this area is lines, this area is cross hatching. So I'm, I'm really into that. Mm -hmm. Did you get to meet Linda Berry when you were at the Zine Fest? Cause she was teaching half of the people that were actually selling comics at that. She teaches at the UW. I know, I've heard about her class and I'm almost like, oh, I, I really want to take that class cause I've read her books about teaching. Oh, yeah, when I was in Madison, I stayed at this housing co-op, which I had never, heard of a housing co-op before so that was interesting too they were like yeah Linda Berry's my teacher I was she visited me in the hospital and like she's so nice and I was like ah I was really hoping to like see her at the zine fest right. I wish I could have met her because like she's been a huge inspiration I just love her style so much mm -hmm. actually really her lettering style I really like how she does like some letters are not cursive and others are. Very journal style too. And that's one of the things that I noticed about yours, like there will be some panels that you do where it's really a talking head. Well, honestly, just a lot of times I just run out of space and I'm like, well, I gotta draw something, I'll draw my head. And just certain stylistic things came from me doing them once and just kind of kept doing them. Like I always draw myself with really bad roots cause I had terrible roots and now I've actually started styling my hair so I have roots. <laughs> I had a little crisis where I dyed my hair pink and I'm like, oh no, am I gonna have to draw myself a different way? And then that's interesting because it's like, oh man, have I like created a prison for myself where I have to be this cartoon character every day of my life? <laughs> but it's like a fun prison where you're like having a good time and painting on the bars and stuff. So the answer is yes, you have. Yes. <laughs> I really want to start a new project because, so my first scene was my unemployment diary, which was, you know, me adapting my diary into a zine. The second zine was me writing about, uh, my second zine is called Baby's First Zine Fest, and that was about my weekend at Ma in Madison for the Print and Resist Zine Fest. My third zine was actually, have you ever done the 24-hour comics day? So that's where you do 24 pages in 24 hours and then hopefully turn that into a zine. I'd like to make an actual zine, like another zine. I just, all my zines are kind of autobiographical, so either try fiction or just try to think about something, which is, you know, of course, harder. I have the exact same thing, like, I want to do one where it's like, oh, it'd be nice to just come up with a story with a cast of characters. I kind of realized the other day, it's like, I mostly just draw myself, and then everyone else is like a blob with a smiley face. Mm -hmm. But that's because I don't want to get people in trouble or... 
I actually got in trouble, or not in trouble, but um, I drew a comic once about interacting with my boss at my internship, and she saw it. I think it hurt her feelings, and now I feel terrible, and I still have to apologize to her. I have been putting it off, and I don't really know what to say, but maybe I can, like, give her a fruit basket or something. I don't know. It's... But that's one of those things that you kind of learn doing a daily comic strip is that there's that line with other people. You can't, like, use them for material all the time. I know I did one where it was, like, talking about me and a friend going to a bar, and I just put, me and name redacted went to the bar tonight. (laughs) I think I remember that one because I think that's when you and I first started commenting back and forth because you had originally said that you were thinking about going out, but you kind of didn't want to, and you're like, I could just sit at home and watch RuPaul's Drag Race all night instead, and you ended up going out, and I commented, I'm like, I'm glad you went out. I remember that because that was during Pride, and I was, like, all dressed up. I wasn't sure if my friend was going out and I was like well I can't sit at home in this tutu even though I've done that before so you can I can and I have it's just that I hate it when I waste a night out by not going out Mm -hmm. and I have to remind myself that nothing's going to happen at home outside is where the things happen kind of inspired me to look into doing more sort of zine fest type of things so we've actually been researching some of the shows and hopefully we'll be doing a few this summer if you haven't already you can subscribe to this show at americanbandito.com slash subscribe or just search for american bandito on uh whatever podcast listener thing you use that was well worded And if you'd like, you can check out my daily comic blog on the site, or you can read the story from the very beginning in a collected novel that I put together that you can purchase at book.americanbandito.com. And I've got a whole 366-page book there called Then This Happened, A Diary About Breast Cancer. The music for this episode was composed by my band, Lorenzo's Music, and you can check more of that out at lorenzosmusic.com, where I also have a musician podcast where I go out and meet musicians from around the world. And you can check that all out at lorenzosmusic.com. Next week, I talk with an artist who had a gallery showing at a local coffee shop. Until next time, so long.